Report now, Nigeria's food inflation has skyrocketed to 33.69%, uh, prompting action. A stakeholders attributed this crisis to various factors, including widespread insecurity with armed groups controlling part of the nation's agricultural heartland. We'll look at that in a moment, but the international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joins me now for further discussion. Morning to you, Mokhtar. I trust you had yourself a wonderful weekend. It was like celebration galore, right? Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, celebration galore. You got that. You got me there. Thank you. All right. Uh, 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 Mukta's um, 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 family had uh, some birthday sometime over the weekend, but that's not the issue for today. Let's just talk on business now. Let's begin with what's happening in the country. Do we start from Dangote? I don't know if, like, if I should call that some cheering uh, news. Uh, uh, the, the Dangote himself, uh, you know, took um, senior journalist uh, on a guided tour yesterday at the facility, and he mentioned that. Uh, Petrol is to be rolled out from August after the initial bottlenecks have been, you know, you know, sorted out. He said it was intervention of the uh, the federal government and the NNPCR. But Mokhtar, I don't know if it's in my head. Is it like um, when we see some sort of um, development uh, locally trying to come, so Nigerians can actually have some sort of um, uh, you know uh, relief, some sort of uh, international. Uh, links or so tries to frustrate our, our effort because I remember uh, something happening uh, with when um, airpiece uh, went uh, you know started their London route uh, and uh, the price really really came down just uh, before we know it uh, all the international uh, carriers uh, you know you know sort of dropped their prices I, I know it's competition and all of that but then I felt it was like some sort of frustration but Dan Kote was saying that um, it was IOCs that were frustrating uh, uh, the the rollout of um, petrol, uh, but now he's assuring that uh, from next month Nigerians will soon start seeing petrol. What are your thoughts really on this development? Well, thank you, Justin. I hope you're among those senior journalists that went to that plan <laughs> because I spoke to uh, one of the senior journalists that actually went to that plan spoke to me this morning and he was so excited that um, when he went there, the future of Nigeria is very, very bright when he saw the young people that were actually going to be involved in this um, uh, um, Dangote refinery, some of them were 24, 25, saw chemical engineers, he saw Nigerians that ordinary would have been chemical engineers that will now work in the financial sector, but he saw Nigerians, young uh, people that are going to really work as chemical engineers. That's what was even exciting him. Mm. Him and that tells you about the man Aligo Dangute. Now, my, 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 I'm, I'm happy that the federal government actually stepped in and decided to say, Look, this is an homegrown company, we have to protect them. Yeah. Uh, what has made Samsung what it is today is because they were largely protected by their own economy and they became a global player. What makes one of the most giants in, a, in, 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 in any sector what they are is when they are protected by their own government, especially. So, um, I'm happy about that. But again, the OICs have always been at this, and you've asked yourself, why have they not even set up a refinery in this country? In other countries, you go where they operate, they all have refineries. Why have they not set up refineries? Mm. Because they are benefiting from the system. So I'm happy that um, finally we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel. It will be good for this administration, it will be good for the federal government, as they have been able to intervene to see that um, Dangote refinery actually begin to export refined petroleum product not only um, 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 export refined petroleum product they will also be able to make domestic pay. if you look at the what dangote told us it was going to be making about 20 billion dollars oh. uh, from 2025 i mean that's half of what we have as a foreign reserve already and again he said something again that he will be bringing that company to the nigerian stock exchange yes, and he said look yes. nigerians should be part owner of um, of this company too so everything seems very right mm -hmm. over what dangote is trying to do i and i said before dangote came in remember there was a time we we're buying diesel this was almost hitting two thousand naira. immediately dangote refinery started um, refining diesel in this country through diesel out there in the market it has moved from that level to a steady at 1200 available so those are the type of things and homegrown economy can do we've come we've talked about it the ownership taking ownership of your economy oh. and that is what dangote is doing 
All right, uh, because uh, just to uh, buttress uh, what you said, uh, he, c he complained at some point they were paying over $6 uh, dollars, uh, above the market price, you know, when he was talking about his frustration with um, IOCs and all that. But then another good news is that uh, beyond uh, resolving the crude um, supply issues and announcing plans to roll out petrol in August, uh, he told journalists that the refineries fertilizer unit would resume production in two weeks. Look, Justin, it's just good news, good news, good news, because <laughs> remember, we are talking about food security. Mm. And here we are finally, we achieved source of children in fertilizer production. Yes. And that will enhance our, our food security that we've been complaining about. And also, you mustn't forget also that um, this is not, the illegal damage is not just thinking of Nigeria, it's also thinking of establishing food security in, in Africa. So, it's all just good news. I think for the first time, Justin, you and I were talking this morning, and we are, we are only seeing the good things about what is <laughs> going to happen, government supporting it, we might see the light of the day. I I strongly believe, that's why I think Dangote made one statement when he was made a member of those um, F, um, interventions. He said, it is not rocket science to solve Nigerian problem. Within three months, we can solve Nigeria's economic challenge. Now, look at it this way. What will Dangote Refinery bring to the table? Dangote Refinery will help bring down inflation. Dangote Refinery will help stabilize our exchange rate. Mm. Dangote Refinery will provide job for Nigerians. And there's a lot you can keep talking about what Dangote Refinery will do for Nigeria. Mm. I, I think for me, it's one of the best news. We've seen this cartel, whatever they call themselves, or whether OIC or try to bring down Dangote Refinery. Remember at the point they said that about half the workers in Dangote refineries are not Nigerians. Mm. They are from a particular part of the world. Mm. And Dangote rebuked it and came up with statistics. And some of the senior journalists that visited that place are now talking about the innovation they saw from young Nigerians aged between 22 to 24. So we are beginning to take ownership of a key sector of the Nigeria economy, the life, the lifeline of the Nigeria economy. So I'm excited about that. People are saying, oh, why should NMPC not have more than 20%? The reason why NMPC said they wanted 20% was because of the strategic issue that they thought Dangote finally will bring. Mm. Now, they said they have reduced their holding to 7.2%. Yes. For me, it's not bad mm. because at the end of the day, we expect NMPC to be a competitor with Dangote Refinery because they mm. already have four refineries when you call them Marathon, but mm. could be turned around through the help of the private sector. Why are we not looking at that part that NMPC is beginning to think that we can compete with Dangote Refinery? We have a refinery in Port Harcourt, even if you were saying that it's going to start production in December and we have gotten those right, has not come. Maybe this is the time that we are going to see that refinery come on soon. Maybe this is the time NMPC will start thinking out of the box also to become a competitor. And NMPC have made so much noise that they are bringing NMPC to the stock exchange in the first quarter of this year. We're in the second quarter of this year. We've not heard from them. Here we are now seeing Dangote saying, I will bring my refinery to the market by second, by first quarter of 2025. Mm. Will that not also drive NMPC to say, look, it's time for us also to begin to open. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when there is competition, True. definitely the cost of energy will come down. So yeah. we shouldn't think, look at it like, Oh, NMPC is not owing 20. It should be good news because they say they always reevaluate their, their investment. Yeah. My only challenge is now if you are reevaluating your investment, you are thinking of doing a swap deal of um, to get $20 billion. Mm. And here you have a company that is telling you that will generate $25 billion in one year. Mm. Why are you not doing that swap deal with them? When I they wonder. are also shouting that we need crude, we need crude. Mm. So something is wrong somewhere. All right, before we get into the discussion of uh, food security, which is still related, now let's just uh, look for other side angles to all of this. Dangote Refinery or Dangote Industries is just one and is actually doing massive stuff. And uh, Nigerians uh, will see all of the dividends in no time, not just Nigeria, but of, of course the federal government and our economy generally. So why aren't we really thinking outside the box in terms of uh, you know the big players you know so they can localize their own manufacturing or their own you know business here yeah? and on the part of the federal government also giving them the needed support like they have done for Dangote so we can have like a spread you know and um, we'll see all the dividends I'm just thinking in my head uh, Mukhtar. Um, 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 uh, let, 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 let me let me let me use an analogy that you definitely know 
about they were a story about four leopards <laughs> and they sat down one place and they said look there is war inside the city if we go into the city i mean we'll not have food because the city is locked and they say if we go out of the city our enemies will will devour they will kill us but one of them say look we have nothing to lose if we go if we stay here without hunger if we go there they will kill us and oh. i said i might even go there and something they will just have mercy on us and we have food to eat those four leopards did that and at the end of the day they became the savior of the, the, the that nation oh. so what am i saying in essence is that whatever dangote has done was a risk oh. he took that risk today and it may have opened the doors for other Nigerians to begin to look at that sector and take the same reach. Uh -huh. Remember that we have some Nigerian companies. We have Owando is largely driven by Nigeria. We have Sepla is largely driven mm -hmm. by Nigeria. We have um, uh, Corn Oil is largely driven by Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So why are we not seeing those ones now coming out to say, you know what, we too want to build our own refinery. Mm -hmm. We have Boa. Boa is planning to build its own refinery too. So when you talk about monopoly, I always ask, who was trying to do it and they frustrated him? Oh. Somebody decided to do it, and the government saw the strategy in it. They saw the benefit in it, and they key into it and support that person. So now it's not left for other players to come and say, let's see whether the government will not support you people too. And I'm saying, we have a national petroleum company. Why are they not coming out? How will a national petroleum company owned by the government not come out, and the government will not support them if they come out? Those are questions. So sometimes when you talk about monopoly, oh. you should always think about the daring nature that Dangote has done. He dared to do the impossible. And when he does the impossible and it becomes possible, oh. everybody will mean to shout, he's monopolizing the market. All right, let's uh, leave away, uh, um, leave Dangote for a moment and talk about food security, which is another aspect of the economy. Mokta, lots of development uh, just uh, uh, last week, uh, the federal government um, announced um, a presidential food systems coordination unit. We've been having several, you know, committees, uh, panels and all of that. Even last year, we declared, uh, you know, state of emergency on food, you know, um, supply and all of that. Also, just uh, last week, too, the federal government uh, uh, decide on a 150-day window for imports of um, uh, duty-free for import on um, rice, beans, and other staples. In my head, I'm thinking that this would actually affect local production of these staples. And right now, how far do you really think uh, this presidential uh, uh, committee or coordination food system uh, coordination unit will go in enhancing the food security that we are talking about, Mokhtar? Just in fantastic news. Remember last week, um, when you and I were talking about inflation mm. and um, what the CBN was trying to do, high credit, and that, and I said it yes. categorically. I said the challenge we have with Nigeria is not the high key rate. Mm. I mean, it will not be the, it will not solve our problem. What we need is that the government should take a bite of their revenue and try to see whether they can use the Kenya experience to make sure that um, we begin to get um, some of these household items at a very good price. By that time, then that will enhance um, importation of this food because eighty percent of what we consume we import, especially household item. Now you say you talk about your fear about the local manufacturers, and yeah. what you need to ask yourself is that the local manufacturers themselves have not been able to meet the demand, especially in the urban area, yeah. and that is why you see the kind of inflationary pressure that we have. It's a short time measure; they say one hundred and fifty days, and so they have a limit. That, for me, is one of the best decisions the government has okay. taken thus far now how is it going to affect food price is a thing altogether we're good we need the government need to be open they need to be integrity especially from those in the sea in the in in our port and in the airport to make sure that these tariffs are actually not paid not the situation by why government say tariff is removed then you see um, corrupt tendency making these people have to pay one a fee or one level or the other remember that this weekend when they came out with a levy that almost all of us should begin to pay to register our car but thank god they said they bring it so oh. you, you see such things i hope the tariff is tariff free levy free then you will see the cost of food item comes down now do i have so much confidence in the committee i do okay. but again it's a committee it's an advisory committee so remember that even when they made the decision that oh for the next 150 they let them remove duty of um household um, items food mm. tables and all that the president that 
uh, the Minister of Finance, who is, who is the head of that team, came out through his, his um, spoke person to say, this is what we have decided to do. Even the President's senior um, advisor, Bayo Nunuga, agreed. But all of a sudden, he deleted that tweet and said, no, it has not been approved by the presidency. Oh. So that is the political buckle neck now. It now took about two days or three days for them to say, oh, the presidency is finally approved. Oh. Now, in economic terms, you need to strike why the iron is hot oh. now. So we need to begin to look at it. It's not about taking personal glory for an, for an economic decision that will salvage the nation. Okay. It's about the people, not about you taking the glory that, oh, I came out with this policy, the president approved it. After all, the president established the committee. So the glory will still go to him. So I keep saying it. The thing that has brought Nigeria to where we are today is that we play politics with two very important sectors of our life, hmm. security and economy. Hmm. I like giving the example of the American. The American economy, the American security, no matter you belong to Republican or become Democrat, when the security of America is threatened, hmm. they all come together. When, they when the economy of America is threatened, they all come together because security and economy does not know who belongs to which party so, or the other. It affects everybody. Right. So I think Nigerians uh, Nigeria should begin to think like that. The government as well begin to think of uh, the economy itself divorced of political intervention. All right. That would be the saving grace. And if they do that, this policy will see the light of day. All right, let's just uh, keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best and uh, ensure and hope really that uh, this uh, move will be well implemented and we'll see the desired change that we need to see that we're expecting in this short run. Thank you so much, uh, Mukta Mohammed, International Finance and Economic Analyst, for your time and your wonderful inputs as always. Thank you for having me, Justin. Do have a pleasant week. Uh, you too. All right, that's the, the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being a part of it. Bye for now.